Hi, welcome back to Professional English Baku. I'm Steve, and today we're going to continue on with our series, and specifically, we're going to be talking about nouns, pronouns, subjects, direct and indirect objects. That is a mouthful. And it could be a little bit of a difficult subject for anywhere from basic, it's really difficult, into beginning intermediate, even into middle intermediate, it's, it can be quite difficult. That's why we're going to spend some time covering it. And it leads into, once we get past this, then it gets a little bit easier. And we're heading into graphing or diagramming sentences. So this is the first element of that. So let me go ahead and make myself whew, a little bit smaller here. Nouns, pronouns, subjects, direct and indirect objects. So nouns are people, places, things, and ideas. In general, it's just things that take action or have action taken against them. Pronouns represent specific nouns. Like Steve is a noun. He, him, in reference to Steve, is the pronoun. His would be a possessive pronoun of Steve. So nouns, people, places, things, and ideas. Pronouns are representing specific nouns. The subject of a sentence is the noun and pronoun taking action. Steve ran. Steve being the noun that is taking action, so Steve is the subject as well. Let's see, also going on, we have the direct object. So the direct object of a sentence is the noun or pronoun, which is receiving the action. So the subject is the noun or pronoun taking the action. The direct object is the noun or pronoun which is receiving the action, with the last one being the indirect object. So the indirect object of a sentence is the noun or pronoun, which is receiving the direct object. So the subject is taking action, the direct object is receiving that action, and the indirect object is receiving the direct object. And we'll go into that. I know that's a little bit confusing, but we'll get into some practice here that will further illustrate this. So practice A. The squirrel ran away. So the squirrel, squirrel is the noun, and it is the subject. It's the only noun, so it must be the subject. And the squirrel is taking the action. The squirrel ran. Ran being the verb, squirrel is the noun. The squirrel is running. So we know the squirrel is taking the action, so therefore it is the subject. To continue that out, the squirrel ran up a tree. The squirrel again is the noun, and it is the subject, because it is taking the action. The tree is a noun, and it is the direct object, because the tree is receiving the action. The squirrel, subject, ran, verb, tree, the squirrel is, re the tree is receiving the action of running, of the squirrel running, the tree is receiving that action, so therefore it is the direct object. Is that, it? Is that clear? Squirrel is running, Squirrel, therefore, is the subject that's taking the action. The tree is receiving the action, meaning it is being ran up. Right? The squirrel's doing the running, and the tree is being ran up. So, therefore, the tree is the direct object. The squirrel ran up the tree with a nut. So, in this sentence, we have three nouns. Squirrel, tree, nut. The squirrel is a noun and it is a subject. 
because the squirrel is taking the action. The squirrel is running. The tree is a noun and it is the direct object because the, the squirrel is running up the tree. So the only, the only noun we have left is the nut. And the nut is an indirect object because the nut is receiving the direct object, right? Uh, so let's go on to the next one. Practice B. Steve was sleeping. Steve is a noun and is a subject. Sleeping is a verb. Who's, who's doing the sleeping? Steve. There you go. Steve is the subject. Steve was sleeping in his bed. Steve is a noun. His is a pronoun of Steve. So Steve, noun, was sleeping in his pronoun bed. Both of these are the subject. Steve and his are the subject. Bed is a noun and is the direct object because the bed is receiving the action. Steve was sleeping where? In his bed. So anytime you want to find the direct object in a sentence, you have to ask who, what, when, where. Steve was sleeping where? In his bed. If we go to the, let's go back up a little bit and say, the squirrel ran where? Up a tree. So we know tree is a direct object. Anytime you want to find out what the direct object of a sentence is, you take the subject and you add the verb and that will equal the direct object. Squirrel ran up a tree. Squirrel is the noun. Ran is the verb. Where did it run? Up the tree. Going back to practice B. Steve was sleeping where? In his bed. So we know that the bed is the direct object. Steve was sleeping in his bed until morning. So we know Steve is the noun. His is a pronoun of Steve. Both form the subject. Bed is a noun and it is a direct object. Steve was sleeping where? In his bed. So the direct object is bed. Morning is a noun and is the indirect object because it is receiving the action. So you can say Steve was sleeping where in his bed until when? Until morning. So whenever you're looking at what is a direct object and indirect object, direct object is always going to answer who, what, when, where. And then the indirect object is always going to answer some form of how or when. To. Steve was sleeping where in his bed? To when? Until when? until morning. I know it's confusing, but we'll get used to it. Just remember that direct object is always going to answer the question of noun, the subject, and the action that subject is taking equals the direct object. Steve was sleeping where? In his bed. Okay, practice C. Now we're getting into some more difficult. So these are some sentences that I took from a book that I'm currently reading. So it's more difficult and it makes you think a little bit more about how the sentence is structured. She took the stole, putting it around her shoulders. First off, a stole is a uh, a lush cape typically worn by royalty 
you see in the movies where the uh, the king, the queen is wearing a cape that's made up typically of velvet. That is typically known as a stole. Uh, so she took the stole, putting it around her shoulders. She is a pronoun and is the subject. Her is also a pronoun in reference to the same she. The she is not mentioned in this sentence, but we know the subject is she and her. They refer back to the same proper noun, which is in a prior sentence. So she and her are the subject. Stole is a noun. It is a pronoun. It refers back to the stole. She took the stole, putting it, it is the stole, around her shoulders. She took what? That's how you find the direct object. She took what? The stole. So stole, it's the noun, and it is the pronoun for stole. So that forms the direct object. Shoulders is a noun also, but it's an indirect object. Because she took the stole, so she took the stole. She took what? The stole. And what did she do with the stole? She put it around her shoulders. So, she, subject, stole, direct object, putting it around her shoulders. Her shoulders are receiving her taking the stole, right? So, shoulders is the indirect object. Two wise ones sat on the floor at the center of the room amidst a forest of columns. Okay, so in this particular book I'm reading, wise ones are elders in, the, in this uh, organization. Wise ones is the official title, so uh, wise ones is capitalized, both words wise ones, because that is a title, a proper noun. So two wise ones sat on the floor at the center of the room amidst a column or a forest of columns. Wise ones is a plural noun because wise one would be singular. Wise ones is plural. So wise ones is a plural noun and are the subjects. Together they form the subject. So the subject of the sentence is wise ones. And what were they doing? They were sitting, right? So wise ones sat. Wise ones sat where? Is a straightforward question, right? Uh, so, so you ask wise ones sat where? Well, this is where it gets challenging. Because the rest of that sentence describes exactly where the wise ones were sitting. They were sitting on the floor at the center of the room amidst a forest of columns. That entire phrase contains several nouns that describes where the wise ones were sitting and that entire phrase is the direct object. Which bring us, brings us to the point, a direct object does not have to be a singular noun. The same with the subject. The subject in this instance is two words. So, because it's a proper noun, it's a title, so therefore wise ones forms a subject, even though it's two words, and the direct object is the rest of the sentence. After the verb and the preposition, the rest of it is all direct object. 
So a direct object, it can be a phrase, it can be a clause, or it can be a singular word. So in this instance, you can see it's at, on the floor at the center of the room amidst a forest of columns. Now amidst is a preposition, not very, it's not used very often. Uh, this book that I'm reading, it's a fantasy novel, so it has words that are not very frequently used in the English language. Amidst is more Old English, and you won't typically see it in, in modern novels or novels about mod the modern times. Uh, amidst meaning in the middle of. So it's a preposition. It indicates location. So two wise ones, subject, where were the wise ones sitting? On the floor at the center of the room amidst a forest of columns. That last part there is the entire direct object. There's no indirect object in this sentence because wise ones sat where? Floor at the center of the room amidst a, floor, a forest of columns. There's nothing more. So what I would ask you to do is pause right here, read through this yourself, and make sure that it makes sense so that you can read each of the three sentences and you can find the subject and you can find the direct object and the indirect object. So now, unpausing, you're going to go to the second one and you're going to do the same thing. Keep practicing until you can find it. You can find the subject, direct object, and indirect object all on your own. And then finally, you're going to and tackle these more difficult ones. Again, you're going to be looking and saying, okay, what is the subject, what is the direct object, and what is the indirect object. That's it for today's lesson. Today we learned nouns and pronouns, how they form the subject, the direct object, and the indirect object. We learned that the direct object is going to answer the question of the subject and the uh, verb. The subject is, say for example, she took what? She ran where? She asked who? Okay, so you're going you're gonna to for form a question out of the subject and the verb and that will lead you to the direct object. And then if there are more nouns, those additional nouns will either form a portion of the direct object, meaning for, you know, for the sample where I had on the floor at the center of the room amidst a forest of columns. That was all the direct object because it all answered where? Where were they sitting? So more nouns could mean that the direct object is larger and if all of the nouns answer the question of the subject and the verb put together then you know that all forms your direct object. If the nouns do not answer the question of the subject plus the verb saying then you know that is an indirect object. Okay, well thank you very much. Uh, it's a pleasure doing these videos. If you enjoy them, first you want to see a particular subject then please uh, shoot me off a comment and I will uh, try to get a video on, on your requested subject. And as well, please like this video, give it that thumbs up, and subscribe to the channel. As well, please comment, let me know what you're thinking about these. Uh, you like them, you find them helpful, 
If there's something you'd like to see a little bit different that you think would help you more, uh, please let me know in the comment section. And again, thank you very much. I'll see you next time.